the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy lived on a farm in the middle of the great Kansas prairies with her Uncle Henry and Aunt Em. When she stood outside their one-roomed wooden house, she could see nothing but flat land scorched grey by the sun. Not a tree nor a house broke the broad sweep of country that stretched to the sky in all directions. Dorothy had just one friend, a little black dog called Toto, whom she loved dearly. Usually Dorothy and Toto spent all day playing together, but one day something stopped them. Uncle Henry sat on the porch, and Dorothy stood with Toto in her arms, and they both looked anxiously at the gloomy grey sky. From the north they heard the low wail of the wind, and they could see the long grass bowing before the approaching storm. Then from the south, came a sharp whistling sound. Suddenly, Uncle Henry stood up. There's a cyclone coming, Em, he shouted. I'll go look after the animals. And he ran off to the sheds. Quick, Dorothy, screamed Aunt Em from inside the house. Run for the cellar. Aunt Em threw open the trapdoor in the floor and climbed down the ladder into a small dark hole dug in the ground. Dorothy started to follow her but she was only halfway across the room when there came a great shriek from the wind and the house shook violently. Then the strangest thing happened. The house whirled around two or three times and rose slowly into the air. The north and the south winds had met where the house stood and made it the exact center of the cyclone. The great pressure of the wind on every side of the house raised it up higher and higher until it was right at the top of the cyclone. There it stayed to be carried far away. It was very dark and the wind howled horribly. But after the first few whirls, the house just swayed gently. At first, Dorothy was filled with terror at the thought of being dashed to pieces when the house came down to earth. But as the hours passed, and nothing terrible happened. She stopped worrying. At last, she crawled over the swaying floor to her bed, and with Toto beside her, she soon fell fast asleep. She was woken by a shock so sudden and severe that if she'd not been lying on the soft bed, she might have been badly hurt. As it was, Several seconds passed before she realized that the house wasn't moving and that sunshine was flooding the little room. Dorothy sprang from her bed and with Toto at her heels, ran and opened the door. She let out a gasp of amazement for she was now in the middle of a country of marvelous beauty. Wherever she looked, there were banks of gorgeous flowers. Birds with brilliant plumage sang in trees covered with luscious fruits. In the distance, Dorothy saw some little round houses, all painted blue. And then she noticed, coming towards her, a group of the queerest people she'd ever seen. There were three men and one woman, and although they looked much older than Dorothy, they were certainly no taller. The men, who all had beards, were dressed in blue from their boots right up to their pointed hats. These had little bells round the brims that tinkled sweetly as they moved. The little woman also had a pointed hat, but hers, like her gown, was white. Her face was covered with wrinkles, and she walked rather stiffly up to Dorothy. She then bowed low and said in a sweet voice, You are welcome, most noble sorceress, to the land of the Munchkins. We are grateful to you for having killed the Wicked Witch of the East and for setting our people free. 
Dorothy listened with wonder. What could she possibly mean? Oh, uh, you're very kind, but oh, there must be some mistake. I've not killed anything. Your house did anyway, replied the little old woman. And that is the same thing. Look, there are her two feet. Dorothy looked down and gave a little cry of fright. There indeed, just sticking out from under the house, were two feet shod in silver shoes with pointed toes. That wicked witch made all the munchkins slay for her night and day for many years, explained the old woman. They were overjoyed when they saw that she was dead, and they sent a swift messenger to bring me here. I am the witch of the North. Oh, gracious, cried Dorothy. Are you a real witch? Yes, indeed. But I am a good witch, and the people love me. I am not as powerful as the wicked witch who ruled here, or I should have set the people free myself. But I thought all witches were wicked. Oh, no, <laughs> that is a great mistake. Of the four witches who lived in the land of Oz, two of them, those in the north and the south, are good witches. <laughs> I know this is true, for I am one of them myself. Those in the east and the west are indeed wicked, wicked witches. But now that you have killed one, there is only one wicked witch in all the land of Oz. The one who lives in the west. Just then, the munchkins, who'd been standing silently by, gave a loud oh. shout and pointed to the corner of the house where the wicked witch had been lying. <laughs> the old woman began to laugh. The feet of the dead witch had disappeared, and nothing was left but the silver shoes. <laughs> she was so old that she shriveled to dust in the sun. <laughs> that is the end of her. But the silver shoes are yours, my dear, and you shall have them to wear. She picked up the shoes, shook the dust out, and handed them to Dorothy. The Witch of the East was proud of those silver shoes, said a munchkin, and there is some wonderful charm connected with them, but what it is, we never knew. Oh, oh thank you, she cried. They fit perfectly. But tell me, can you help me find my way back to Kansas? I live there with my aunt and uncle, and I'm sure they'll be worrying about me. The munchkins and the witch first looked at one another, and then at Dorothy, and then shook their heads. I do not know where Kansas is, for I have never heard of it, said the old woman. You see, here in the land of Oz, we are cut off from the rest of the world by a great desert. Your only chance of returning home is to go to the Emerald City and ask the great Wizard of Oz to help you. Is he a good man? He is a good wizard and more powerful than all the witches. Uh, whether he is a, a man or not, I, well, I, I cannot tell, for I have never seen him. How can I get to the Emerald City? You must walk along the road paved with yellow brick. It will take you through land that is sometimes bright and pleasant, and sometimes dark and terrible. I am afraid, my dear, that I, I cannot go with you. But I will give you my kiss. And no one will dare injure a person who has been kissed by the Witch of the North. She kissed Dorothy gently on the forehead, leaving a round, shining mark. Then, with a friendly nod, she whirled round on her left heel three times and disappeared. The munchkins bowed low and walked away through the trees. 
Left alone, Dorothy prepared for her journey. She changed into her blue and white gingham dress, found her straw hat, and filled a basket with bread. Then, with Toto trotting beside her, she set off along the road of yellow brick. The sun shone brightly, and the birds sang sweetly, and she soon began to feel quite cheerful. When she'd gone several miles, she stopped to have a rest. She climbed to the top of a fence, sat down, and looked across a great cornfield. Not far away was a scarecrow. Its head was a small sack stuffed with straw, with painted eyes, a nose, and a mouth. It was dressed in faded blue munchkin clothes and was raised above the corn by a pole stuck up its back. Dorothy gazed into the scarecrow's queer painted face and she was astonished to see one of the eyes slowly wink at her. At first she thought she must have been mistaken. But then the figure nodded its head to her in a friendly way and so she walked up to it. Good day, said the Scarecrow. Oh, did you speak? I certainly did. How do you do? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty well, thank you. How do you do? I am not feeling very well at all. <laughs> oh, it is very tedious being perched up here night and day to scare away crows. If you would take me off the pole, I would be greatly obliged to you. Dorothy reached up and lifted the figure off the pole. It was not very heavy. Uh, oh, ah, uh, oh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I feel like a new man. <laughs> no, <laughs> tell me, who are you? And where are you going? Oh, my name is Dorothy, and I'm going to the Emerald City to ask the great Wizard of Oz to send me back to Kansas. Where is the Emerald City? And uh, who is the great Wizard of Oz? Oh, well, don't you know? No, indeed, I don't know anything. <laughs> I am stuffed with straw, you see, so uh, well, I have no brains at all. <laughs> Do you think if I go to the Emerald City with you that Oz would give me some brains? I can't tell, but you can come with me if you like. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. <laughs> I am most grateful. <laughs> Straight away, Dorothy and her strange new friend set off along the road of yellow brick to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz. <laughs>